Hi guys and welcome back. Um, today I'm gonna be actually uh, just speaking on the actual in the actual uh, southwest border, uh, the actual border fence and uh, some of the tactics they used to dupe us. Some of the actual tunnels that they actually conducted for many years. Um, properties, rock throwing, cutting sign. So I'm going to be actually uh, filling up actual uh, tunnels, you know, filling them up with cement and stuff. So um, just to um, give you guys an idea, um, along the actual southwest border, um, for the majority of the actual mileage, um, there's an actual fence, whether it be an actual fence fence or some poles to prevent vehicles from being driven across. Um, some of these actual um, areas, they're actually washes through valleys and when it rains it rains fast and it comes out there pretty quick so if you were to put some panels up then panels will be swept away at the first season of rain you know so they just usually put these posts deep enough where if they do cut through them with actual welding supplies they can be seen heard and it'll take them a, quite a bit of what quite a bit of actual duration to conduct this actual chopping of the actual fence in order for actual agents to actually show up and push them back, you know, because you have to figure that these posts are actually filled with cement. So, and they're pretty deep inside. So it's not like you just push them out of the way with the vehicle. You know, they're pretty state, pretty much uh, stable and pretty uh, pretty tight fit along the border. And uh, throughout this actual fence line or this actual uh, barrier, uh, there's an actual. At the, at the most, it's a one lane road, you know, consists of actual gravel, dirt, or sand. Uh, it'll be rare if there's any kind of actual cement or asphalt, uh, depending on the actual uh, terrain. And it'll be just cut with the actual mountain, you know, I mean, a mountain in, you'll actually see uh, uh, along the actual mountain, into a certain point to the actual engineers actually set up an actual fence or the post. So along that actual road, it has to be actually uh, cut every so many minutes. And that's, it's old school, it's old fashioned, but it's, it works, it still works. So you still wanna actually do it. Uh, most, um, stations they actually have a chain with an actual um tire attached to it that way it can actually just slide the actual uh the tire along the actual road and if it actually um say for example it's it's eight o'clock in the morning and that that road got dragged and if somebody actually comes from behind that actual um uh, person dragging let's say a half hour if somebody comes through that actual road, there should be no footprints. There should be no evidence that anything has crossed between you and that actual vehicle conducting the actual drag. So if there's actual disturbance to the actual soil, that's when you actually start working traffic up north. And they can be actually pretty well hidden too. They'll have branches, they'll have actual um, carpets, They'll have carpet on their actual feet. If they're running dope, they'll actually put carpet on the bottom of their feet so you won't actually leave, leave an actual footprint. It'll look disturbed, but it'll look disturbed in the, maybe the wind got to it. And it that way you don't leave an actual footprint behind and you can get the dope across. People, it'll be too actual, too tedious and it'll be too actual, Um, it'll get in the way. A group is going to be more faster and it's going to be more actual uh, covert than the actual backpackers because backpackers, you can only hide so much, you know. And so when you actually conduct these actual um, drags, you can actually uh, put yourself in a very vulnerable position. And putting yourself in a very vulnerable position, meaning that um, there's lookouts. And I remember Shadow did a video calling trolling the Border Patrol. Yeah, they were trolling them. They were actually taunting them. But 
they were actually scouts. They were actually scouts. They knew what they were looking for, and they wanted to know how many on shifts were actually going to respond to their shenanigans. That's all that was. You know, they're collecting intel throughout the day, you know, whether it be off in the U.S. side, conducting, you know, pulling over on the freeway with binoculars, looking at our station, see how many vehicles are actually working that day. Oh, believe me, they have a number of civilian vehicles, a number of government vehicles and support elements. So they're they're up on game on that. So when you actually um, come across such like trolls or taunters, you have to be careful for the fact that you don't want to get caught up in them actually throwing rocks at your vehicle or you outside your vehicle. You always have to be safe out there and helps maybe about 10, 15, 20 minutes away sometimes, you know, and this primarily happened down in Imperial Beach to the Chula Vista area of the actual border, you know, and that would be consistent of the Southwest border, you know, and it's more of a criminal element. Criminal meaning you have the chances of actually running into a criminal trying to get across that could be armed, that could have an outstanding warrant, that could be facing possible jail time if they get caught trying to come back into the U.S. A lot of them actually get deported on parole. So if they were to ever come in contact with law enforcement in California and they still owe parole, they automatically violate that for the fact that they never report it for their parole procedures. Parole meaning they got deported out of sight, out of mind. That way you don't have to actually um, deal with this individual, hold him here until he's off parole. No, just he agrees to be deported and, and get sent to a South America or Mexico, depending on your actual um, your country of origin. You don't see this, um, you don't see this in nowadays, but in the late 80s and early 90s, um, there were such actual, uh, how do you say, there were such uh, individuals that were actually given a, the nickname of border bandits. And for the majority of them, they were actually armed. And when individuals were actually crossing, not really that organized, they had a tendency to have cash on them for expenses. In case they did get across, uh, pay the actual guide, pay the actual transportation, make a phone call, get something to eat. So you actually had actual, a little bit of pocket change on you. And these border bandits took advantage of that. Or they would actually steal those smugglers loads, armed robbery, you know, on the actual north side. So you always had to be up on game when it came down to um, working in Imperial Beach, um, San Isidro, and Chula Vista for the fact that you always had to mix in that element, that criminal element that was readily available to get down, you know, and Quite a few times, um, migrants would come down, you know, from the mountains bleeding, pistol whooped. And, you know, and these guys would just run down south, you know. And that's when uh, we started communicating and actually shared a channel with uh, an actual beta unit down in Tijuana. And these actual, they, I, don't, I don't think at the time they were an elite force yet that you hear about now, that during that time, they were mostly um, kind of a little bit more on the trusted side and readily available around the border. So that way we can communicate on a two-way radio with them live, one-on-one, -on -one, you know, and let them know, hey, 
we got a we're, we're chasing a border bandit he's armed he's going down this actual um area and then they would actually intercept on the actual south side because now when you're dealing with an actual uh, an armed bandit you know you, uh, you you're gonna try to catch this guy before you know he can hurt somebody so you know they were readily available for actual these type of actual calls and uh and they were uh they were uh their call sign was actually beta you know what i mean beta and we had our own channel for them and um that's how we just communicated you know what i mean and same thing with rock throwers we would always hey we got a group of kids you know a group of kids over here you know on this area in this gulf in this gully in this valley or this wash and just call them out give a description of them throwing rocks and then they would take care of business on the south side you know and uh, there was a couple of uh there was a couple of incidents that made the paper uh agents shooting these actual you know rock throwers and um you know they the, the press went as far as um you know they they were really really uh agitated they were really frustrated with certain groups throwing rocks at them that um that they actually killed one kid to send a message that was true i, I don't know you know what i mean and but that just happened later on in years but you always had to be careful and you always had to be actual um, prepared to take that actual you know decision and remember i've told you guys in the video before that my training my rookie partners we were both went through the same same actual um cycle but through a different agency he ended up going border patrol and when he was border patrol he actually shot an individual for assaulting him you know he actually opened up on him and uh that's just the way it happens you know just the way it goes you know he he apparently he thought he was enough threat to actually uh unholster it you know and we when we went through the actual academy hey if you're gonna unholster that gun you better use it because the paperwork's gonna be way way more when you unholster it and don't use it that's the way how i went through you know now it's different now they take you, you get your you know you get a gun pointed at you by a cop for having ear pods on your actual on your ears driving you know what i mean and so you just have I mean, things are times are now times are different now and we actually had uh, vehicles that were outfitted with with actual fences like a uh, chain link fence and um just to cover the actual the glass part so you can actually drag the road without getting assaulted and without getting hurt by these rock throwers you know and I'm, we're not talking about you know a big boulder we're talking about small rocks that can be a projectile item that can go through your window that can actually hurt you, you know. A big rock which could be big and you know it'll smash, it'll drop. You know, I'm talking about these small, small rocks that can be fling hard and fast. And if you include a slingshot, yeah, you're gonna have problems, you know. So that that's how the actual some trucks were actually outfitted. And uh and with time, you know, with time, it, we've they the, they actually the government felt the actual threat of actually uh, providing um, sectors, you know, with armor vehicles, you know, like armored transportation for cash or the SWAT type of actual vehicles. You would actually uh, have one readily available in case you had to extract victims or an agent or um, become an actual uh, visual deterrent, you know. And you can actually mount a machine gun on top of these actual armored vehicles, you know. And you always had to be um, ready to actually conduct certain maintenances to certain fences, to certain ranches, to certain gates from them being cut, you know, the actual weather elements, you know. So you actually we actually had a construction crew that actually... Um, uh, actually maintenance the actual border fence they, you know they had their welding gear they had uh to make cement you know to make um you know mix cement mixers and so they just how you would need for a construction they were actually agents that were conducting these type of actual um operations uh you know during operation gatekeeper and we even had uh, actual um when we would actually cut the sign we actually had uh lights high powered lights mounted to the actual um to the side of the actual trucks or the suvs to light up so you, as you're driving um you don't have to hold it with your actual the flashlight with your hand or the actual spotlight it could actually be 
you know, from the back of the vehicle, light up the actual, you know, but you're actually trying to find sign, you know. I remember the one of the first week I was out, you know, in the rural area out there in uh, in San Diego. Um, I, I thought I had a cool little slick light, you know, little, little port, you know, like small little, it was bright enough, you know. And uh, agents weren't able to see it when I was actually conducting traffic at night. And um, they told me straight out over the radio, said, hey, uh, good night, make sure you get rid of that match. And you pick up a real battery on the way out from the actual from the supply room. Yep. So, uh, you know, yeah, you learn fast, you know, you learn fast. And, and it, we had enough actual uh, supplies. We, have a, we had enough actual um, support that, um, I mean, every so many months we had a new bulletproof vest, you know, uh, different types, different sizes, you know, different actual um, fittings. You know, we always we always had different um, options on actual um, the type of vest you had. We had we were actually issued, and of course you would have to buy your own trauma plates, but that was up to the individual, you know. And uh, I, I I had my own trauma. Well, my family bought the trauma plates for me. You know, they pitched it and they actually you know they bought them for me as a gift. And uh, I, I didn't use them every time, but I use them sometimes when I felt the need that um, I might, you know, need a, little, need a little bit of extra protection, for, you know, depending on the actual mission. And as, and as Operation Gatekeeper um, started actually uh, seeing some actual progress, seeing some actual uh, success, um, an actual station being at 100%, uh, we were actually making an actual difference to the point where you weren't seeing any more groups of five, tens. You were seeing groups of 50 or 100. And uh, we had everything shut down. You know, of course, one or two get by. And they're all individuals that can actually cross by themselves. They know the know-how to be able to go back to home, to their ranch in, in wherever in Mexico, uh, drop off some money, you know, touch bases, and come back and cross individually by themselves and very successfully without even being uh, under the radar, you know. And these individuals, I mean, they were just here to work. Um, they were not trying to, you know, cross people or, or contraband. Now, these were workers, you know, field workers that, uh, they had jobs here in the United States, but also their families were in, in Mexico, and and they they still exist too. By the way, they they know which way to go, what time, and what exactly what they need. You know, I'm not saying they never get caught, but I mean they have a good chance of actually getting through. You know, and uh, very successful. You know, and uh, so we would have like a hundred uh, groups of a hundred trying to come in through the actual beach, Imperial Beach. Um, through the actual freeway, the five freeway, the actual by the port, uh, San Ysidro port, you know, group of 100 to 50, I mean, to like 50 and groups of 100, you would call them bonsais. And uh, as that didn't start, it didn't, that actually wasn't very, very uh, successful for the fact that these coyotes were not getting paid. So if you throw in 100 people to actually storm an actual port, Let's say, for example, 25 get through. They're going to blend into the city. They're going to make a phone call. So now the coyotes out of who's going to actually, who are they going to pay? So that stop. As soon as the coyotes stop get or the polleros stop getting paid, now they put a stop to it. You know, and so they um they started pushing these groups out to the East County, and when we first started out there, I'm telling you guys. We hit the ground running, we tripped, and we started back up and running again. We were getting in groups of 100 at a time, 100 plus. And we had 15 passenger vans. Oh, you know, we put more than 15 in them. And as fast as we can actually process them, we'd have to go out again, you know. And when you're actually um, busy with actual people, and it was a big, it was an actual big problem for the fact that we were maybe at one, at, a, at a time we were five on in one shift, and we were working in groups of a hundred. So we were pretty, I mean, we were at a at our maximum capacity work wise, you know. 
And we, of course, we had support from neighboring stations, neighboring counties. And let me tell you, if we ever need a backup or a situation actually presented themselves, Sector actually had these different counties ready for you at a moment's notice. And I'm talking about they, 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 they got there fast, you know, they got there fast. And uh, so as we started actually um, focusing on the actual people, who knows how much, how, mu how much dope got across, to tell you the truth. Because we were catching actual groups of, of dope coming through backpacking, you know what I mean? And it, in some parts of the actual border, they're not far from the freeway. So it wasn't that much of a hike. Maybe it maybe at about a three hour on a slow, on a steady space, in a steady pace. Three hour walk is not that long, you know. It is when you're carrying backpacks, but you have to consider you're carrying backpacks of dope, so it's gonna slow you down, you know. And you're not gonna carry more than 10, 10 people in a group because that'll be too many people you have to actually wait on, wait for, and you have to get a vehicle that can actually carry them 10 backpacks. With all that has to all that. You know that you have, you have to actually factor all that information in. So, as soon as um uh, we would get stuck with a group of a hundred, I mean, what else could we do? You know, and there were so many techniques that they, I mean, they would they would they would have dump trucks where you would think it would be nothing but actual gravel, but it was hollow inside and it had people inside, and one that hardly ever gets talked about. Well, how hardly ever even gets spoken on is actually cloning border patrol vehicles. But I gotta give them to I gotta give them this one right here though. Okay, so you know, um down in old time in San Diego, there's a lot of junkyards, there's a lot of auctions for seized vehicles, there's a lot of auctions for uh wreckers for vehicles that get wrecked and border patrol boy, let me tell you. We went through some vehicles, you know. Rollovers were nothing. It, they were normal, you know. Somebody roll over their, you know, their new Tahoe, their new Expedition, new um, F-150, you know, whatever. We had a mixture of a smorgasbord of vehicles that the government wanted to try out, wanted to retrofit. And, I mean, when I first went in, we were retrofitted an actual... Bronco, what could only be described as a ice cream truck in the back. Fiberglass. Um, you could actually step in like a like stairs into the actual back of this uh Bronco, full size Bronco, and uh, had a a revolving door. I mean, they they tried anything and everything to actually uh be able to actually move large groups in your vehicles. And so, my favorite actual vehicle was. A Cherokee. Early model 90s Cherokee with the big fat tires. The climb actual terrain. That was my that was my go-to. I, I, I loved it because it was so narrow. Uh, the the actual wheelbase, you didn't have to worry about sliding or getting stuck in some in like a little gulch. You don't have to worry about actually um getting your wheel getting stuck and then you flipping over. Now, these, these big fat tires that actually uh, hugged a lot of actual terrain, a lot of road, you know. I was very, very comfortable with that one. Okay, now let's get back to cloning um, Border Patrol vehicles, okay? So, like I said, there was a smorgasbord of actual, a fleet of different types of actual off-road vehicles, trucks, vans, conversions, you know, any type of actual um Domestic actual vehicle that could be used out in, in that type of terrain, it was used and it was bought. So there wasn't, a, there was not a uniform actual vehicle that can be can be said, you know, the Border Patrol uses Broncos only, Cherokees only. No, no, it was a mixture of stuff. So you didn't really know exactly who was driving what and what station they were actually out of. Because don't forget, there's different stations in San Diego and in the East County, and there's also checkpoints. And every single vehicle has a tag number describing what 
station they're out of, along with the vehicle number, along with also with with checkpoints. You know the Sac Sacramento checkpoint or the Temecula checkpoint. You would be able to tell which actual vehicle was assigned to each station. So it wasn't hard for these actual traffickers to easily buy these government vehicles at auction or just paint one up. And they didn't have to be new. My my actual vehicle, not the one I actually use at the actual border, I, I, that was different. My transportation vehicle to get to my actual station that was two hours away was a uh, Crown Victorian. And that Crown Victorian, what it was, the Interceptor. Yeah, I think it was the Interceptor. That thing was old. It was clunky, but it was a smooth ride. And I cruised the freeways at 90 miles per hour, cruising. Cruise control, floating at 90 miles per hour. It, you couldn't even feel it. It was old. And I loved it because nobody ever beat me to it. I'd go in there, they'd offer me a, a, a Caprice, a brand new Caprice, a brand new Crown Vague, a brand new, uh, the, the square type of, uh, of uh, Caprices. I mean, no, no, I, I'm on my Interceptor, you know, because I knew what I was, I knew it was clean inside, you know. And so when you're using that vehicle four hours a day just in travel time, you know, that, that could be very comfortable, you know. So for them to actually uh, clone an actual vehicle was not a big deal and if they actually put a fictitious um an actual uh station number a station name and along with the number who would know who would know even even if you put a mechanics or a uh, some kind of mechanic uniform on this individual forgetting about a person in actual law enforcement with an actual Border Patrol uniform. No, no. Give them an actual mechanics uniform. And give them a little magnet saying that it's out of service. Who's going to question it? You know? And what is he doing in this part of town? Oh, he's a, he's, he must be taking this vehicle to get service or picking up a part or actually, you know, uh, driving it to make sure it test drive, you know? That was also, that was very, very slick. You know, that was, that was smooth, you know. Here's another one. So, like I said, there's a lot of auction, uh, there's a lot of junkyards in, in Otay Valley and um, Otay Mesa. So, a lot of tow trucks are actually involved in this actual transportation of actual vehicles, seized vehicles, and so forth, right? But, why not buy a wreck? Border Patrol vehicle, throw it in back of that actual tow truck, and run dope in it. Obviously, that truck is not going to be used because it's wrecked. Obviously, it's been auctioned out because it's behind this tow truck. And just run the dope in its last step. It's wrecked. Who's it even going to question it? Who's even going to question it, right? And it, it was, it's, I mean, the thought and the actual, uh, the time to dedicate to actually pull these actual schemes, successful schemes, it just made you just, all, all I did was laugh. All I did was giggle and laugh. And some people didn't like that. For the fact that, you know, we got duped, you know, come on. You have to, you have to admit, it, it, it's pretty slick, you know. And for this tow truck driver to not really risk any kind of actual um, scrutiny when he's crossing a checkpoint or going through town. You, you know, you don't know who he's taking it to. You don't know if somebody bought it for parts, you know. And, and anybody can buy these for parts, you know, these, these actual uh, body shops. You know, these actual uh, people who, who are actually rebuilding an engine, rebuilding an actual vehicle, 
you know, all that comes into fact, you know what I mean? And, and as long as they have the wig bad lights off, as long as you, they strip of everything, and sometimes it's actually the buyer's responsibility to, to actually take these actual electronics out because they won't get done. And if, you, and if you're caught with them, yeah, you, you can be impersonating an actual loss with, you know, with red lights or blue lights. So it's, it was your responsibility to actually take it off, take it off. And if you're smart, you would take it off right there as soon as you buy it at that junkyard just to avoid the whole problem. And that's including the cages, too. Now let's get into actual um, tunnels. Tunnels, tunnels, tunnels. Okay, so let's start off with this first one here. Okay, so this actual, again, it's so simple. Like Shadow says, low tech beats high tech. Okay, so out in actual, um, in Otai, uh, that's an actual, a business commercial park. So when they actually develop this actual land, there's an airport there for importing and export through the airport. And there's actual the urban development in place. But a lot of these actual buildings are not actual being utilized. For whatever reason, you know, what I mean, there's no need for them. It, it didn't. It, it didn't. The boom didn't work out the way it was supposed to. But you still have to put the infrastructure. You still have to put the manholes. You still have to put the drainage. You still have to put the runoff. That takes the water somewhere, right? So they're along the actual border, and they're close enough to where, yeah, you can just dig a small tunnel connect to the actual water, um, to the actual sewer system, underground sewer system, and you have a straight pipeline, you know? And uh, it doesn't have to lead to a building, right? Why not just set up a big dumpster that gets picked up, gets dropped off so many actual days, so many times a, a week, right? So all they did was create a hole at the at one of the sections at the actual um, dumpster, made a hole, put it on top of a certain manhole for the actual um, for the drainage for the actual uh, for the for the rain runoff, and take that manhole cover off and start bringing in your dope through there. Not people. People talk. People brag, and people will. Tell somebody just to brag. So it would be rare for you to bring a group of people through a tunnel. Not unless they're VIPs. That's different. But to run dope from a small section of actual tunnel you have to build, break into the actual break into the actual um The, uh, the current sewage runoff, tap into that and run the dope through that actual uh, drainage up where that actual dumpster is and just, pull, you can see the pulley I, I, I put in the illustration, just pulley the actual, um, the dope up and have a uh, dump truck. I mean, actually have the actual, um, the, the actual, uh, the truck that picks up these big dumpsters, all you got to do is put a, you're not going to overload it, you're not going to overweigh it because it, you have to actually balance it out. It can only be a certain amount of weight. So after you put so many packages in, just put a piece of plywood and to keep that plywood in place, just put some packages on top, some weight on top and have the actual, uh, the actual truck to pick up that dumpster and take it to its destination for the dope. And they ran this, they ran this, this, this scheme for, for years. Again, who's going to question a dump truck, an actual dumpster? Who's going to question it? And have some, have some actual um, cover boxes readily available to put on top and then you have to cover it. So you already have the actual, the, the, the actual cover to 
to uh, avoid suspicion. Because by law, you have to actually have your uh, dumpsters covered with a, some kind of a mat and some kind of actual, um, some kind of actual, uh, you know, like a blanket type to, you know, to uh, to cover from actually anything getting blown away. Right? It was that easy. It's that easy. It's that easy until somebody got curious and got nosy and noticed. I think they for I think they, the group that did it before. I think they got lazy and they got too comfortable and did not replace the manhole. And that drew some suspicions and somebody kept snooping and they determined that that there was actual hole in the dumpster. It was empty, but that's how they got the actual someone's attention. See, it doesn't rain that much in San Diego, so you wouldn't need uh, the city workers to go out there and actually... Um, check these actual they're not going to check all of them you know what i mean they can run some water through them and they can whatever they do to service them but it doesn't rain that much in san diego to where they need to be constantly uh checked off you know checked off how easy is that you know and they've had it for years you know and this other one also uh in, out in the rural area uh but you know it th then again okay so the original actual owner of this ranch that um I think he was I think he actually had a, it was a pig farm I think it was a pig farm or some kind of livestock out there pig I think it was a pig farm so he was actually convicted of actual drug smuggling because he facilitated he facilitated an or, a, a cartel with his actual residence his actual property as a staging area or some kind of actual he actually was convicted of an actual um part of that actual racket so it'd be for either some logistics vehicles i don't mean i don't remember but anyways he got actually um arrested he got that property seized from him by the federal government and he got and he's doing time right now in somewhere in florida he's in federal prison so the actual property is seized now. A uh, Mexican couple goes to the auction, buys this actual old pig farm, and rents it out to this older gentleman. I remember the first time I actually went through this individual's uh, pig farm, this actual, you know, residence. And First thing the training officer told me, don't ever come in contact with that gentleman. He's crazy. He will run you off the actual farm with a shotgun. So just avoid him at all times. Avoid him at all costs. Of course, I'm gonna, of course, anybody is, right? Anybody's that can actually avoid it. You know what I mean? Who wants to deal with the crazy man named with the shotgun included? And he would run you off the property, you know? So he was actually, he wasn't crazy. He had an actual, uh, like a hay, like uh, a truck to uh, carry bundles of hay, bales of hay. Uh, but he actually, you know, he, he went into town and he, you know, got supplies, you know, and he did his thing, you know, he had a routine. And um, turns out, that there was an actual tunnel going through that rural area with an opening on the south side, not obvious, and it led to a closet with a safe in it, and the safe was big enough to where the tunnel came up on the north side from there. It was it was a tight tunnel, but it was efficient enough to where they got people vips they got high end quality quantity product and i know that there, there's stories and there's there's also facts there's also you know there's proof that the tijuana the afo sinaloa jalisco 
all these actual cartels always at war? This was a, this was actually the peace treaty. Everybody had a chance, an opportunity to use this actual tunnel at a price. But then again, it was a it was for sure. It was a sure thing. And that included top cartel leaders, the cross, VIPs. You know? And that's how a lot of the actual cartel, high ranking cartel, cartel members were able to cross the border when they needed to. They didn't have to risk actually getting caught trying to cross through a vehicle or the mountains. No, easily. That's the only time you'll actually see an actual tunnel being used for people for VIPs. And I forget how this actual individual got caught. I think his vehicle broke down or just somebody got curious or he pissed the wrong agent up and they just gave him a hard time and discovered in between his, you know, his uh, supplies or whatever, he had some contraband. And of course, when they took him to jail. They, they conducted some search warrants, and uh, and they found the actual uh, the opening inside a safe, a huge gun safe, I think. And that's how uh, they came to be. But that 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 tunnel was also used for many years. Yeah. All right. Sorry, guys. It was a little bit long. Forty minutes. Forty-one minutes. But uh, hope you guys like and subscribe. Thanks a lot, guys.